Well, welcome to this uh, Bond Salon training video about uh, condition and prognosis reports. I'm delighted to have Sarah Paps with us, uh, who's going to explain what this is all about. So, what is a condition and prognosis report? Well, a condition and prognosis report is very much what it says on the tin, really. It's a report on the claimant's condition, and normally the claimant will have suffered an injury or be suffering from an illness, and also a report on their future prognosis what the future holds for them in the light of that illness or injury. So it's their current condition? Yes. And a view on prognosis? That's it, yes. Uh, and why do we need such a report? Well, I need to put it into the context of a legal claim, if I may. And I'll start by using the legal terms, but then I'll go on and explain okay. it. To bring a legal claim, you need to prove three things. That is, breach of duty, that that breach caused a loss or damage to the claimant. Now the claim is the person bringing the claim. By breach, we really mean, and this is a real simplification, that something has gone wrong. Now something has either gone wrong because someone's done something they shouldn't have done, or they haven't done something they should have done. Right. And then you have to go on to show that that wrong has caused the claimant to suffer some form of injury or damage or loss. So how does that fit in with this condition and prognosis report? Well, the condition and prognosis report is showing that the claimant has an injury or loss, so it's that part of the claim. I see. Um, what about once the case has started? Well, once the case has started, the condition and prognosis report is crucial to both parties for valuing the claim. At the very beginning, it's the claimant needs to know whether they've got a claim or not, they'll need it. But once it's started, then both parties will need to be able to value the claim. And is this in terms of general damages, isn't it? It's general damage and special damages. And the condition part re um, relates to general damages. And by general damages, I'm talking about a big general payment that's there to compensate the claimant for um, the pain, suffering, the, the injury they've suffered. Now, that's a difficult figure to calculate. And us lawyers use something called the Judicial College Guidelines which is a book, it gives details of injuries and a very rough guide as to what kind of figure the claimant can expect to recover. So information on condition is really, really valuable. As much as and possible. special damages, perhaps you could just explain that. Yeah, special damages. Now this is more to do with the prognosis element of the report. Sure. Special damages are the monetary element of the claim. Something you can get the calculator out and actually work out how much it's going to cost. Something you hear things like future care or loss of earnings. Something quantifiable. So the condition is about the previous medical history and the current state. Yes. And the prognosis is about the future, which, and that, that ties in with special damages element. Yes, that's it exactly. Uh, what's the point of the condition part of the report? Well, the condition part of the report is one, to show that the claimant has suffered an injury or an illness, and two, to show that they need to have some payment for compensation, the general damages part. And what sort of things will the um, claimant solicitor be asking you, the expert, to look for? Typical things will be the seriousness of the injury, um, how it's impacted on the claimant's life. And they'll ask, although this ties in a little bit with prognosis, if the um, complaint is going to resolve. I see. And will they look at uh, medical reports? Then? Will the expert look at medical reports? Yes, the they need to see what the claimant was like before they suffered the injury see what kind of impact it has had on the claimant's life. So it's like, like a before and after shot? Very much. Um, and what about the prognosis element? Prognosis is slightly more problematic, and this is where the expertise really comes into effect. It's to forecast how the claimant's life is going to continue in the light of their injury. So will they be able to return to work? Are they going to need care? It's that kind of thing. So is, is the condition more about fact? And the prognosis is more about opinion, or is a bit element of both of fact and opinion in both I sections? I think fact and opinion in both sections, but I think prognosis is probably more going to be opinion. That's where the expertise of the expert comes into effect. And do you have any advice to our experts about how they should express that opinion, or how they should come to that opinion? Well, they should keep facts and opinions separate, and that's something I'll discuss later. But the opinion is going to be keeping up to date with current knowledge. It's going to be what they're used to seeing. Can they back up what they can predict in the future by having looked at cases in the past? 
Now you mentioned the expert looking at the medical reports and other documentation. What about actually examining the claimant? Yes. Now this is where a condition and prognosis report is very, very different to other kinds of reports you'll find in the legal process. The uh, claimant does have to be examined by the expert. And so that's arranged presumably by the expert? Yeah, normally it tends to be easier because the expert knows what their diary commitments are. Um, should any comment on breach of duty or causation be made? In the no. no, unless your instruction um, solicitor has specifically asked you to link the three elements together, then no. The condition and prognosis is a stand-alone report. That means it should be read on its own and, and not have any comments on the other factors. So it's purely about condition and prognosis, as you say, on the tin. Purely about condition and prognosis. Um, what about if an expert's not quite clear what they're supposed to do? Um, then they should definitely go back to their instructing solicitor. I'm sure it wouldn't be the expert's fault if things haven't been explained properly. It's much better to get it right at the beginning. There are deadlines to meet in litigation now. Get things right at the beginning and it will make the whole process easier. Well, we'll be coming on to uh, time limits and uh, um, timetables later because these are vital, aren't they? They are, yes. Um, now, in terms of the civil procedure rules, which again we'll be looking in a bit more detail, what's the application of the civil procedure rules to these reports? Well, rather confusingly, they do and don't apply to a condition right. and prognosis report. It's a very legal response. It is, but um, I'll explain it in a bit more detail. When someone goes along through the solicitor at the very beginning, the solicitor obviously doesn't know whether or not they have a legal claim. So it could well be that they'll phone up an expert they're familiar with and ask for an informal opinion just for the purposes of establishing whether there's a claim. Now for that type of report, it's probable that the civil procedure rules won't apply. So this is just to get a preliminary view That's it. whether it's worth taking the case forward? Yeah, just to get a feel for the case really, whether there is one. Now once things get more formal, once it looks like there is going to be a court case, that's when the civil procedure rules do apply. But that really is something that's more a problem for the instructing solicitor, not really the expert. It's for them to let the expert know whether or not their report is going to have to comply with the rules. Is that initial report disclosable? Um, arguably not. If it's purely to see if there's a claim, argue not. But I think, to be safe, it's better to prepare all reports as if it were as if they were because there is the danger isn't there that that could come out later definitely yes so would you advise our experts to prepare the initial rough and ready report to be as though it were compliant with the SCPR? I probably would, to be honest. I don't think it would have too much time. And I just think that it's always better to be safe than sorry with reports, communication with the claimant, anything. Always be prepared that sometime in the future, the other side might be looking at it. So just to summarise, condition and prognosis report standalone. Yes. Should be done thoroughly. You look at the documentation, you see the claimant. Um, any other general advice for our experts? Um, I just would emphasise, and um, we talked about the expert having to contact the claimant to make an appointment. I'd advise that um, communication between the claimant and expert is kept to a minimum. Um, any further inf um, contact done by instructing solicitors, it's just email correspondence can tend to be a bit informal. Um, if it can't be avoided, then just make sure that you'd be happy for the opposing party or the judge to see it in the future. All right, so well, we'll be coming on to the civil procedures later. Thank you very much. So thanks very much. That's the end of Module 1, and we'll take you on to Module 2 shortly. Thank you.